Coming up on Techzilla, we shoot unarmed hard drives. Yet another scam to avoid online, hands-on with 4G, screwdrivers for electronics, DIY server help, Veronica's set-top box mega list, and we've got your viewer questions. Get the griddle spit hot and grab your favorite ladle for the pancake batter, because Techzilla starts now. This episode of Techzilla is made possible by The Ben Heck Show, building, modding, and electronics culture with Ben Heck and friends. Brought to you by Element 14. Medal of Honor, step up to tier one. And Go to Assist Express, support smarter with Go to Assist Express. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to Techzilla. Hands-on reviews the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or how factual the events in the social network really were, we've got an answer for you. You know, movies are always totally based on fact. I read that online. On Wikipedia? Mm, yes. Hey, and if we don't, we'll track down someone else who, who does or go to factcheck.org or Snopes or something else like that. And before you ever, no one emails us anything about saving the earth or the planet or an election without checking Snopes.com first. All right? That's the rule going into the elections. That's all I'm saying. Snopes.com before you forward that email. Thank you. Anyhow, I ran into a delightful new scam this morning. Apparently naughty folks on the internet mm -hmm. have servers, thousands of servers, doing brute force cracking of the passwords for Gmail accounts. I got a Did few verification emails today. Not, not emails, but just people saying they were trying, my password was trying to be changed. Mm. And I was like, I don't do that. Yeah. Well, me. I mean, I'm assuming it's Hotmail and, and Yahoo too. The one I saw was somebody know their Gmail account was hacked. And then we got this frantic email, which completely didn't sound like this particular human being, which made it really funny. Uh, he was on vacation overseas, and they'd lost everything except for their passports and their plane tickets. And they just needed cash. And of course, the next step is you email them, and they split off a secondary account for you to communicate so mm -hmm. your friend can't see it. And then, of course, the next step is to, well, probably involves sending money via Western Union or MoneyGram or some other scam-friendly money transfer system. Not anything against any of those systems, but they are often used by naughty people to make your money disappear. Well, you know what's nice now that we have Twitter, we can actually send a direct message to someone over Twitter being like, hey, are you are you screwed right now? <laughs> yeah. like, are you overseas and lost all your money? But why would I you got do an that? email from you. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you emailed me. There's other ways me. of verifying this kind of stuff, I guess. We can only hope. So yeah, call. Don't don't ever why eBay. Craig's is always talking about this. Don't wire money to strangers. The car they're going to ship you doesn't exist. <laughs> well, lots of other big news this week. Uh, Windows Phone 7 is uh, not quite here yet, um, but we know what the first 10 phones will look like. Ooh. November 8th is the U.S. street date for Microsoft's latest challenger to BlackBerry, Android, and iPhone. And this week they announced the first 10 phones, which will be available on October 20th in Europe, weeks before we see them here in the U.S. US. And uh, my favorites were basically all the ones from HTC, of course. The HD7, the 7 Mozart, and the 7 Trophy. Though the HD7 seems to be the only one that's definitely coming to the US. And that's Mozart? on T Mobile. Hmm? Mozart? Why yeah, is it called Mozart? Mozart? Does it I don't sing? Know. It's lyrical. <laughs> I don't know, but they're all really pretty. They seem like pretty solid devices, too. They've got a lot of great features. So, you know, people are still a little bit concerned that they're going to have that whole. Windows vibe to them that, that tends experience. to freak people out a little bit, but we've seen a few Windows 7 phones before, and, and I've enjoyed using them in the in the past, in the recent past. So I, I've I've gotten hands on with one for like 10 minutes. I think they're doing smart things to actually take the best parts of other Microsoft products, like the Zoom mm -hmm. interface, and moving it into the phone. I think this is just the best chance yet Microsoft has of really making market penetration and and not getting spanked by the Google and the Apple and the and the Blackberry and well pretty much everybody Microsoft else makes with the phone. penetration and the spanking <laughs> always speaking of Microsoft the best bargain of Windows 7 ever is back and I left my copy on my desk in the other room we're talking about the Windows 7 family packs they have returned three Windows 7 home premium upgrades for 145 from Amazon they lay list for 150 I found it for like 123 bucks at my local Costco of course I got hammered with 9.5 percent sales tax Woot. Woot. <laughs> but that still beats the snot out of paying 120 bucks for a single upgrade license. Three licenses, like 125 bucks online. Get 
You just it's walk away from XP, walk away from Windows. It's time to go to Windows 7. Yeah, home premium is the one that we probably recommend for most home users. And yes, it includes Windows Media Center, which is really nice. The Pro version runs you $80 more and adds Windows XP mode to help run older apps, along with domain join and network backup tools. The $220 Ultimate version of Windows 7 takes all the features from home and Pro and adds in BitLocker and more language support. Yeah, I, I, I home premium. Everything I have, yeah. even at work, is running on home premium. Nice. You can upgrade Vista, by the way, in place. So it means you can upgrade it while running the disk inside of Vista. Generally, we would prefer you treat Vista like XP, wipe the drive, and start all over again. And if uh, backing everything off your system sounds ugly, check out Laplink's PC Mover Upgrade Assistant. Typically sells for 20 bucks. It'll help salvage everything off that old machine you want before you wipe it and put on the new stuff. And by the way, Microsoft wants to be very clear. Family pack is available until the supply runs out. Until supply runs out. Yeah, they're trying to create a little, you know, demand running into the Christmas season. Yeah. Well, from the we never thought Skynet and the Terminator would be Google products department, it turns out that Google has built a Prius that has been driving itself around the Bay Area. The New York Times reports that with someone behind the wheel to take control if something goes awry and a technician in the passenger seat to monitor the navigation system, seven test cars have driven 1,000 miles without human intervention and more than 140,000 miles with only occasional human control. Uh, the only accident involved one of the seven cars being rear-ended while stopped at a light. Uh, that happens so often here in San Francisco. I'm thinking robo-cars might actually be a pretty good idea. Yeah, people drive like fools in this town. Yeah, um, for my commute too, especially. I can just sit there with my Kindle, <laughs> hang out. It, it, you'll still be responsible. There's a great article at Jalopnik.com. It's a really awesome automobile uh, enthusiast site. And they actually called up somebody at the DMV and they're like, is this legal? And they're like, you know, it's kind of the next step. You got the cruise control and then the car drives itself. As long as there's someone in the car, it's kind of like having a student well, driver, right? Behind the wheel. Behind, well, there's someone behind yeah, the they wheel. Have the, and Google's like, we have someone behind the wheel, we've got like an engineer on board, they probably have a squadron of Marines Although, standing nearby. I have seen actual images, taken by Robert Scoble, by the way, of the Google car driving itself <laughs> and there being someone in the in the driver's seat, but no one in the passenger seat. No was technician in the car. Was that on the test track or on the street? It was out on the street on the highway. I, I wonder if they did that just so Robert could get the picture. How the hell would they know where he was on the highway? Robert Scoble? You think he planned it? You think it was planned? The whole no. they have to do he is... Thought it was, he thought it was a Street View car. Uh, every, and, and he tried to videotape it, and they, they slammed on the brakes <laughs> and, and got way behind him. So they were like, uh-uh, no pictures. No pictures. It's pretty trippy, right? Because like Google, you don't really think of, this is Google moving into a radically different business than you normally think of them. Although it turns out this project is the brainchild of Sebastian Thrun, who co-invented Street View and led the Stanford team that won the second DARPA challenge. Uh -huh. Can you see the combination there? What's How that's all coming together, huh? Hey, you guys yeah. like that thing I did An with the Street View? An entire database of all the streets in all the major cities around the country mm -hmm. that a car can just follow. Validated manually by the company to yes. verify the, the accuracy, which is a big deal. I like that you could program the car to drive passively or aggressively. I got. I just love the idea of like really? merging. Really, that's into, a feature. That's a feature. Get out of town. I, I, basically, if, if if you set it to passive, it'll sort of like let other cars pass it. And aggressive, it'll pass cars for you. <laughs> this is so cool, but also so terrifying at the same time. This this is this is this is where the Terminator comes from. Yeah, well, I just want a car on rails. You know, I want a car, basically, I know what Roger just yelled in my ear, it's called a train. Thanks, Roger, I know what that is. But I mean, like, when you want to go on automated mode, it's still going to be in the same lane all the time. What you don't you really have to worry about it veering off. A driver would be nice. It would be nice. Yeah, Sadly, be nice. Uh, John Markoff's article in the New York Times suggests the technology is at least eight years out. I hear you finally got 4G, by the way. 4G has shown up early in San Francisco. This is my long-suffering Sierra wireless Sprint Overdrive mode, and we'll talk about this in a second. But yeah, Sprint turned on 4G, aka WiMAX, the mobile version of WiMAX, in San Francisco. Yay! 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 Oh, I have to say, though, the microcell you let me borrow? Uh-huh. Different world. It's been a different world in my house. Notice a world where I can make calls where I can receive calls. You can't really see it over the cameras right now, but Veronica is glowing. It's like... Your eyes are sparkling like somebody just gave you something shiny on Christmas morning. Well, you kind of did. Uh, you, your phone so works So until we have house. to send that back, I mean, I'm a changed woman. <laughs> You're a changed woman? I might not give it back. We'll see. I know that breaks all sorts of rules, but man, I'm sure that you thing can is, pay for it if you I want guess. to keep it forever. I know, I know. 
It's a it's a hard it's a hard bu bullet to bite, but I think I'll have to do it. I don't want to give AT and T more money. That's well, the thing. But you want your phone to work. I do. Well, anyhow, four G. I'm sorry. I we were talking you. about four G. I don't know how much of the the city has gotten four G coverage, um, but by the end of this year, Sprint plans to have their four G system, their WiMAX, mobile WiMAX, in 55 or 60 cities. Verizon has their four G stuff. They plan to be in 38 cities by the end of the year. AT and T's HSPA Plus. It's kind of a super three G that promises to max out at 21 megabits per second. Don't start frothing at the mouth because I'm going to tell you what the real world speed is in a second. <laughs> they're saying they're going to be nationwide with their next gen 3G by the end of the year. And their 4G stuff, uh, their LTE is out in Dallas and Baltimore for testing. So how's the 4G compared to the 3G? I know it's supposed to be like 10 megabit plus is the theoretical max for yeah. Sprint's 4G, right? Theoretical being a big word there. <laughs> I, I was actually pleasantly surprised my results were consistent with the uh, Sprint 4G results and PC Mag's epic, the fastest mobile networks 2010 round. If you haven't seen it, we got a link in the show notes. They basically did like 21 cities, 42,000 tests across all the major networks. Um, Sprint says folks should expect three to six megabits per second, which is, you know, actually kind of what I experienced. Um, because it was funny, the first time I tested it, I was in the back corner, like my testing corner of the office where RF goes to die. And it was like, I'm like, a half a megabit down. Are you kidding me? And then I actually moved towards a window. Mm -hmm. Like right now, actually, just before uh, before we started shooting, I got like four and a half megabits per second down inside the building, which if you understand, this building is a nightmare for, for cell phones. Um, testing, I got anywhere from two to four and a half megabits per second down. Three was pretty typical, uh, which is about three times as fast as my, my 3G USB stick usually got. Nice. I'm actually kind of pleasantly surprised. Up was typically just under a megabit, and this has no data cap. Um, oh, very nice. Yeah. They don't need to cap it yet. And the, but one of the things that Sprint is, uh, well, my, my contract says I don't have to pay for, I, have, I get an unlimited amount of 4G. Baller. Yeah, well, unfortunately, <laughs> 4G is in like 142nd of the cities that they have 3G coverage in. Um, by the way, uh, they're claiming, Sprint wants everybody to know that uh, uh, my that the, their WiMAX has greater capacity, can handle more users than uh, their tubes are bigger. Their tubes are bigger than mm -hmm. AT and T's HSPA, so uh, it'll be interesting. And that WiMAX, they say, even has more capacity than LTE. Overdrive, not my favorite. I bought this out of my own cash. Uh, I love. I've never had a Sierra wireless product that I didn't love. Uh, recent firmware upgrades have helped with the battery life on this. Um, and it doesn't seem to overheat and shut down while charging anymore, which is a big plus, because for the first month and a half I had it, I had to charge it upside down, usually on some large stone countertop really? with, with the battery cover off. Um, it draws more power than uh, your typical USB port can generate, so you're going to need a uh, like a 1.2 to 2 amp cigar lighter socket USB adapter to keep it running in the car or the wall board, which of course is always nearby, to keep it running for more than a couple hours. Um, I think 4G in a lot of ways is still pretty bleeding edge, and 4G, by the way, it's a blanket name, it's not a single technology, it's what everybody's referring to all the next generation wireless technologies. Now, if you want an awesome deal on a really solid, really, really, really easy to use 3G technology, yes, yes. Uh, check out Virgin. They've got an amazing MiFi deal. Uh, the MiFi is the 3G version, absolutely fantastic, like credit card size wireless router from Virgin. Uh, well, from Sierra Wireless, Virgin's got it for 150 bucks for the device. Then 40 bucks a month, pay as you go. You want the coverage? You pay the 40 bucks. You don't need the coverage. You don't pay it. Uh, if you go uh, with a notebook, uh, so basically, if you don't need need the uh, Wi-Fi, um, they have a USB thumb drive for 80 bucks, and it's unlimited. Unlimited 3G, which is very, very nice. You know, my overdrive, Captain 3G, unlimited in 4G mode. I can actually use the 4G mode in San Francisco now. That's nice. I keep forgetting to test it in Alameda to see if it's made it across the bay. So I'll probably be, somebody <laughs> like is going to be seeing me strapping antennas to the top of my house later on before I realize Just get a big that. flagpole and, and, and tape it to like the rope and just pull it up to the top of your building. Slowly but surely. Oh, and the uh, typical ping speeds were actually much better than I expected, about 120 milliseconds. Nice. Viewer questions, shooting hardware with guns, and more viewer questions. Right now, though, let's thank one of our sponsors, The Ben Heck Show, the all-new online TV series created for and by electronics enthusiasts and sponsored exclusively by Element 14. Join Ben and friends for bi-weekly episodes as they modify and build all kinds of community-suggested gadgets. Got an idea for a mod? Then share it with Ben, or if you're ready to build, Element 14 is ready with the parts list to make it happen. Either way, be sure to tune in at element14.com slash TBHS.
Jamie sent us this email. He writes, I just bought a tool set for the purpose of building my new gaming PC. I have some concerns with the screwdrivers, don't we all? I think I ruined my last PC's motherboard with magnetic screwdrivers. I was hoping for some advice about what screwdrivers to buy or any tips or stories about ruining projects. Jamie. Well, there's nothing wrong with magnetic screwdrivers. Assuming, of course, they're not some bizarre neodymium power Dr. Horrible screwdriver of doom that you picked up on eBay. I've got to get me one of those. I know, they sound pretty good, right? They probably don't exist, though. Hey, seriously, though, Jamie, I often intentionally magnetize my screwdrivers with a tool like this. It's, you know, like a $5 gadget that shows up in a hardware store as I go like this in the magnetizing section a few times. And look at that. Ooh. I magnetized. Wow. Not a lot of magnetization. It's like science right in front of my eyes. <laughs> it's like science right in front. I like that thought. It's like science. And you could do it the other way. And oh, well, it was just working before. Apparently, I've forgotten how to properly demagnetize tools. In any case, it's the same thing as do it the other way. And, <laughs> and it does work most of the time. You know, in any case, you well, did, I magnetized the tool. You did such a good job at magnetizing it. <laughs> Somebody's going to email be like, you did not use the proper technique for demagnetization, Mr. Norton. Well, well. In, in any case, I can magnetize things. Um, magnetic tips, by the way, quite handy when you need to drop a screw into the, one of the corner spots in your motherboard. Uh, what you also want to do is make sure that you're properly grounded. Uh, a combo of an anti-static mat and an anti-static wristband can go a long way to ensure that no stray charges from you affect the components. If you live in a house where you zap yourself every time you like walk across the room and touch the door handle, you really should be grounding. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't used a ground strap in forever. Uh, I just ground myself by touching the case before I get hands on with the electronics. Yeah. When what, I was building know. my last PC, I used a magnetic screwdriver, and it was a lifesaver. Yeah. And it worked great, and I didn't have any trouble. Yeah. In terms of ruining motherboard stories, um, do you want heat-based ruination, water-based ruination? I think he um, meant firmware related upgrade? to the magnets. Oh, no. Related I've, to the I've magnets. never heard There's of a magnetic of screwdriver to do it. ruining a motherboard. I could be wrong, though. Well, if you guys have any <laughs> experience with ruining motherboards with magnets, uh, not, you know, Regular magnets, we're talking about the magnetic <laughs> screwdriver set is. Num, num, num. The num, 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 num. Let us know, textil at revision3.com. Well, our next question comes from Ryan, who mails, can I run FreeNAS on an old PC without a monitor? Can I set it up over an Ethernet network using a VNC program from my iMac? Is this possible? I do not see anything on the web about this specific case. I guess everybody assumes you have a working monitor in order to set it up. Having gotten rid of them all a long time ago, there are no monitors around here that I can use to set the PC up, and that is my main stumbling block. Ryan, the freelance illustration guy. Um, I admire any geek that keeps the house clean and free of old tech, but at the same time, sometimes you need a monitor. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> FreeNAS will run forever in a day without a monitor. Basically, you set it up, you unplug the monitor, you put it in the corner, you donate it to Goodwill. Well, there's um, a remote access option, too, though, right, for, for FreeNAS? After it's installed. After it's installed. Yeah, basically, yeah. SSH and FTP servers and the software allow you to do remote access to FreeNAS, but, yeah, it doesn't work until you actually have it up and running. You could try installing it without a monitor by memorizing the steps you would need to complete the install, like basically like enter 1234.1234. Or you which could is, print them out, you wouldn't need to memorize them. Right. Well, I mean, sometimes, <laughs> like, because you, you need to find instructions that are actually everything that's on the screen, because mm -hmm. some instructions are good that way and some are kind of not so good that way. Or you could borrow a monitor. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Or yeah. if you have an ACTV with a VGA input, because I'm assuming you just don't have a VGA uh, input. Um, there are options to send a VGA signal into your Mac and then see it on your Mac's monitor, but I think the price would be more than getting a used LCD or CRT monitor. I would ask around. Anybody? Well, if he, got, if he had like a VNC kind of situation, He'd still have to set up the VNC on the other computer anyway. Yeah, he still has to, basically, you'd have to be looking at the FreeNAS box or memorizing right. the steps for FreeNAS to set it up. Yeah. Sorry about that. Borrow a <laughs> monitor. I think you can probably find a pretty cheap CRT on Craigslist as well yeah. for like 10 bucks. Uh, next we have Jim who writes in, just a few days ago I was tinkering with my new PC and went into the BIOS. I was just checking on something, but without realizing it, I pressed a key to set the system password. Uh -oh. When I left the BIOS and my PC rebooted, a dialog box came up asking, enter system password. I didn't put in a password and I was locked out. Luckily, soon after buying my PC, I put an extended warranty on it and Dell sent a tech to my house who put in a MOBO. Now my PC works. My question is, are there other ways of solving dilemmas like this without anyone coming to fix it and having to reinstall the whole motherboard and all that good stuff? Yikes. Yeah, I'm actually kind of shocked that, that Dell didn't. No, that's, that's awesome, though. Yeah, no. Three cheers for the full-on in-house support. Yeah. Um, 
Um, but to answer your question, yes, that's why you should be careful about what you're doing in the BIOS. Well, generally most BIOSes have a short feature that will flush the BIOS and reset it to its factory settings. Uh, that requires you to physically open up the PC and press a button on the MOBO near the BIOS, or press any button, remove the battery, and wait. Although a lot of the modern PCs don't have, like, you know, there used to be a coin battery, yank the coin battery, wait a few years. The problem is, I guess, that it takes forever to wait for the battery to drain out and for the settings to kind of relapse. Mm -hmm. um, best way, though, is, is to locate the manufacturer your motherboard, find the full manual for your Dell machine, and see if there's an option in there to reset the CMOS. Because in a lot of cases, um, especially with machines or motherboards that may end up in corporate environments, they do everything they can to keep people from resetting right. the passwords that are put in place by IT. Because IT doesn't want you in there. Not generally. Well, Patrick and Serafina and Roger got to go shoot hard drives, and they didn't even bring me a stupid t-shirt. Bastards! <sighs> Watch the mayhem right after this. If you're an IT or software consultant, you're always looking for ways to be competitive. You need to grow your business, but can't be in two places at once. That's why I recommend remote support with the new GoToAssist Express. The faster you can connect to a customer, the faster you can move on to the next challenge. With GoToAssist Express, you will increase revenue by handling more support requests, reduce travel time and overhead costs, support clients even when they're not at their computer, rise above the competition by providing faster, more professional service. TechSettle viewers can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToAssist.com slash Texilla. That's GoToAssist.com slash Texilla for a free trial. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, Home Thinking. If you're planning to move to a new city but don't have any ideas what kinds of neighborhoods you should be looking at, check out homethinking.com. The site is actually a realtor's page, but they have a really nifty neighborhood matching tool that lets you find neighborhoods in different places based on the neighborhoods you already know. For example, if I'm living in San Francisco currently, but I'm planning a move to New York City, Brooklyn area, I first pick those two from the drop-down. Immediately, I see a list of potential neighborhoods. I can see that Park Slope is pretty similar to Noe Valley, Williamsburg is kind of like Outer Mission, etc. If you don't agree with a comparison, you can write a review and see what other people have to say about those neighborhoods in the comments section. Clicking on the neighborhood comparison will bring you to a more detailed page that shows you how many people agreed with that pairing. So before you move, see what areas are the best for your tastes with home thinking. We love technology, right up to the point where something we spent a bunch of money on has an epic fail, and out of warranty and unrepairable. Then we get kind of irked. So last week we, sorry, you had to work, V. Um, you can go next time. That's fine, whatever. I keep inviting you to go shooting. Whatever, I shot an Uzi, you didn't do that. <laughs> whatever. Well, we did something to make up for all the times. We didn't go all office space on a dead hard drive. Yes, we grabbed some hardware that had treated us wrong, headed to a remote valley far east of San Francisco, and shot lots and lots and lots of holes in it, primarily in the 9mm and two twenty three calibers. It was cathartic. Pew, 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 pew. Patrick here, Techzilla. I'd like to tell you we were doing some sophisticated analysis of... Well, I don't know, say Hornady Tap versus Full Metal Jacket and the ability to destroy computer hardware and the attempt to harden your hard drives. But the reality is, one of our sponsors said, hey, we're announcing a fabulous new video game like, well, Electronic Arts Medal of Honor. We'd love for you to do something involving guns. Yes, we would love to do that. We gathered together some hardware that had failed. The EMAC behind me pretty much destroyed the hopes and dreams of one of our producer's mothers. So it's gonna die. And uh, we'd like to thank our friend Joshua for making this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of property available for us. We're wearing eyes, ears, we got a safe backdrop, a berm, and basically nothing but dirt between us and the horizon and one very angry, angry raven that keeps buzzing us. Well, hopefully it'll go away. We're gonna go have some fun. <laughs>
One, again, we thank Joshua for letting us use the target range. We thank Seraphine and his mother for providing a computer to take our stress hat on. And three, we will tell everybody at home, now we're going to clean up our mess and properly recycle what's left of all these computers. <laughs> Somebody find me a broom. Whose guns were those? <laughs> well, some of them were mine. Uh, some of them uh, belong to our host, um, mm -hmm. who has uh, who who uh, has a spectacular collection of weaponry, I bet. especially uh, uh, things like 45s. And he had an, actually an ASI Accurized Mini 14 that I wanted to take home with me, and and a really nice Browning high power nine millimeters I'd never gotten to shoot before. It was exciting. You guys were safe, right? With we the whole were, situation. Yeah, no, everybody had everybody had spec glasses on, and everybody used ear protection and we had a good backdrop and there was nothing in the field of fire beyond that should we actually miss the giant nine foot high dirt berm that we were shooting into <laughs> uh, and like 20 foot thick dirt berm we, we we were practicing responsible and safe shooting we disposed of everything all of the detritus from the mayhem was cleaned up and properly disposed of good well, in good. legal channels well next time I'm definitely coming next time hard drives 700 yards with the 308 you in the novel I'm bringing the novel. <laughs> the oh, I mean, sorry, I'm supposed to put my hand on this side. The novel. <laughs> Sadly, the novel has already gone back to the vendor. Oh. We could buy one and you could shoot it. Yes. Belmont's in. Next time, hard drives, 700 yards with the 308. It's going to be sweet. Awesome. Hey, we want to thank everybody at EA and Medal of Honor for sending us out there to go play with guns in the woods and to hurt hard drives. Dead hard drives in pain makes me happy. Veronica set top box, Megalist, and your help with TiVo's gray screen of irritation. It's coming up, but first. Operating directly under the National Command Authority, a relatively unknown entity of hand-picked warriors are called on when the mission must not fail. They are the Tier 1 operators. The Tier 1 operator functions on a plane of existence above and beyond even the most highly trained special operations forces. They are living, breathing, precision instruments of war. They are experts in the application of violence. The new Medal of Honor is inspired by and has been developed with Tier 1 operators in this elite community. Players will step into the boots of these warriors and apply their unique skill sets to a new enemy in the most unforgiving and hostile battlefield conditions of present-day Afghanistan. In the last few episodes, I've talked about how cool it would be to have a huge master list of set-top boxes that we could all reference online, look back to. And uh, so last Friday at like 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I was sitting at work with a beer, and I was like, hey, I should just do it. And so I started it, and then I posted it to Facebook, and then I posted it to Google Buzz. And within an hour, hundreds of people had started adding to this list and contributing data and set-top boxes, and it, it got huge. So take a look. Of course, I have to rely on the wisdom of crowds to make sure this data is all accurate, but it's a cool way to get a snapshot of everything out there. Um, feel free to add any boxes or info that's missing, and we'll put the link in the show notes. You're like Tom Sawyer. I go on Facebook once, and people try to sell me garbage. You go on Facebook, and people do your homework. Well, it wasn't like I didn't go on Facebook. I published it to the okay. to the to like the group page, and then people were like, "Oh, this is cool. This would be helpful for all of us to know." I think it's awesome. You need to do a segment on how you how you post things on Facebook to have people work on them. I just say, hey, this looks cool. Let's, <laughs> let's work on this this afternoon. And it's pretty awesome. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I just, I'm, it, it was so interesting to, to watch it on the Google Docs and see it happen live. Watch it I did follow. learn that there is a maximum number of contributors to a Google Doc, which is 30 hmm. at a time. 30 at once. So we'd have people drop off and then other people come in. People were asking questions That's and the little crazy. chat pane. It was really fun. <laughs> um, and speaking of other things that I dealt with in the past, um, a ton of you wrote in with the issue of getting the gray screen when using a TiVo with cable Ooh. card. Jim wrote in, I've had this problem occur on my TiVo as well. The cable card error screen that I see on my TiVo is basically saying that I'm not authorized to view the cable channel that the TiVo just attempted to access. I found that my problem was actually related to just a couple of cable channels, TCM and TCMHD. Since I am experiencing the identical problem on multiple TiVo boxes and also seeing it on my Sony LCD TV that has cable card, I'm fairly confident that the issue is not unique to TiVo and that it's really a Comcast issue. Zatzai says, Hi Veronica, I thought at first I might need to get a new cable card as I had been told by the cable guy that it's not uncommon for them to go bad and exhibit odd problems. The problem, however, turned out to be far simpler than that. It was a simple case of the cable company not having the correct numbers for my host device, Sativo, in their system. There are, 
as I recall, two different 10 digit or so numbers they need from you. They all had 19 out of those 20 digits correct, so one of the two numbers was wrong. This was enough for the TiVo to work with the cable sometimes and not others. Some channels never worked, others were erratic with working or not working. And then uh, Sheryl wrote, Hi Veronica, I was advised that this problem is related to the change from analog transmission to digital transmission for all broadcast television that occurred at the beginning of the year. My TV is still the old analog type and I don't know if it has anything to do with it. It does seem to be getting a little less frequent as time goes on. Seems there's a lot of different issues out there. Mm -hmm. um, the one that is closest to mine is the was the first email, John's, I believe. Um, we actually talked to Comcast and TiVo this weekend on a conference call at the same time, so we didn't have to go back and forth <laughs> between the two people. And they basically said that it is the cable car trying to sync the TiVo with premium channels that we don't subscribe to, like HBO or but Showtime. But why would it do that? Um, well, because there is a list of channels that it looks for programs on, mm -hmm. and you can just go in there and manually uncheck the channels. So if you go in there, you can actually say, like, don't look for any programming on these channels. It's kind of a crappy workaround, but it did. It has seemed to solve the problem for now. I think other people may be seeing a similar gray screen that maybe other cable card issues. But for me, that was. I think that's Unchecking what it was. Unchecking the channels you weren't subscribed to made it go right. away. Right. Cable card trying to sync TiVo with premium channels that we weren't actually subscribed to. That's funny. So did you? Were you? So you actually got Comcast and a TiVo rep on the phone and talking? Yes. Wow. It, it works out better that way. You I'm just have arguing. to make two separate calls and kind of combine them at <laughs> once. It, it's like one big happy family. Everyone just wants it fixed, right? Right. They don't want our happy customers. We don't want Bill not to call again. Make it stop. She gets like that when her So if this works for any work. of you out there that have had similar troubles, let me know. If not, if you found another workaround, let me know. And it looks like we spoke a little too fast last week when we reported that Xmarks, the popular cross-platform, cross-browser bookmarking site, was going away forever. Later that week, the Xmarks CEO posted this. The past 10 days have been an amazing lesson in the power of community. Not in the Web 2.0 social graph sense. He's talking about old school community with users speaking up, speaking out, and banding together. Thank you, Xmarks users. You told me it would simply be unacceptable for our service to shut down, and it worked. Thanks to your passion, Xmarks now has multiple offers from companies ready and willing to take over the service and keep making browser sync better and better. Yay! So it's actually the CEO of the company. Yes. So you can read more of that on their blog, and uh, that's pretty cool. Thanks to DH4645 in the forums, among others, of course, with the tip on that. Xmarks is dead. Long live Xmarks. Yes. That's so happy. Yay. Well, the company's gone, though. They're, they're talking about the, keeping the technology alive, so. Oh, is it? Is yeah, that what it means? That's what it sounded like. Oh, you know. that's a bummer. Well, it, it, yeah, it's but hard. Still, yeah, well, yeah it's X marks good. back. We like that. Service. Yeah. Speaking of things we like, you want video game news? <laughs> Destructoid. If you've never been there, Destructoid.com has what you're looking for, and it's our newest show at Revision Three. Destructoid delivers to you the hottest news from the world of video games direct from the amazing Destructoid.com website. Coming at you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday only at Revision3.com/destructoid. For everybody watching, we live on your questions, so email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Tech help, product reviews, how-tos, you ask us, and we'll do it. But we need those emails, so don't be shy. Send them in to techzilla at revision3.com. Even better, send us in a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Just keep it to 15 seconds, upload it to YouTube, and send us a link in an email with a video question in the subject line. And as always, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Techzilla. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next time, you've been watching Techzilla. Sponsor inside a fortune cookie, inside an egg roll, inside a duck, inside a sheep, inside a cow. See what areas are best for your taste with homecoming. Well, homecoming. <laughs> Eat my butt. Okay. I don't want to know what goes on behind the curtain at Oz. I just want the results.
The past 10 days have been an amazing lesson, not in the power of community. Whoops, let me read that while saying it correctly. Three, two, one.